everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in the vast animal kingdom, there are plenty of creatures with very strange teeth, and these teeth normally give us a clue as to what the animal feeds on, as the teeth of your carnivores will be very different to the teeth of the herbivorous animals. And in the world's rivers and oceans, there are plenty of fish that also have very strange teeth. So in today's video, we'll be going through five fish with very weird teeth, and we'll start off in the North Atlantic Ocean, as we have the Atlantic wolf fish. Now there are around three species of wolf fish that can be found in the Atlantic Ocean, and the Atlantic wolf fish is the largest of these species, as they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 1.8 meters or 6 feet long, and a fish of this size would weigh around 22.5 kilograms or 50 pounds, and in the wild they can be found in the colder parts of the Atlantic Ocean, and to help them survive in these environments, they have a version of natural antifreeze, and they produce this to keep their blood moving in their very cold environment. And if you hadn't noticed already, this very ugly fish has a large extensive set of dentures, and these teeth often protrude even when the mouth is closed. But the teeth at the front of their mouth only tell part of the story, as although they have four to six strong wolf-like teeth, behind them there are also several rows of molars and serrated teeth. And these strangely large teeth give us a clue as to what they feed on. Wolffish are predatory bottom feeders, mainly feeding on hard-shelled foods such as shellfish, crustaceans, urchins and starfish. But as you can probably imagine, feasting on these hard-shelled foods can damage their teeth. But unlike some other marine species, they do not gradually renew their teeth as they actually fall out and replace them with new ones. And the wolffish also play a very important role in the ecosystem, as a lot of the foods that they choose to feed on aren't tackled by other predators. So if there were less wolffish around, there would be an explosion in the number of sea urchin and green crab species. And despite their quite gruesome appearance, they are a highly valued food fish. But as they live in a colder climate, they take a very long time to mature. And because of this, they are vulnerable to overfishing. And over the last few years, science Scientists have observed steep declines in its numbers, especially in the United States where it's considered a species of concern. So despite its very ugly appearance, this fish's strange teeth help it play an important role in the ecosystem. But for our next species, we'll move down to the Western Atlantic Ocean, as we have the hogfish. Now the hogfish has to be one of the weirdest fish in the ocean, as its head seems to take up most of its body, and its mouth seems to be very large and unique, as it looks almost like a crocodile's mouth, and nothing like any other fish. And although this strange fish is the only member in its genus, it is a member of the Ras family, and can normally be found around reefs and other shallow areas. And in the world's oceans, there are plenty of fish that are named after other animals, such as your lionfish, your batfish, and your butterflyfish. But the hogfish got its name not because of how it looks, but because of how it feeds, as it uses its long, strange mouth to root around in the substrate looking for its prey, which in most cases is mollusks and crustaceans. And this behavior is how they got their name, as pigs are also known to do this to help them find roots and bulbs. And like many other fish in their family, Juvenile hogfish start out as female and then eventually mature and become male. And once it does reach maturity, they can reach a maximum size of around 91 centimeters or 36 inches. And not only is its mouth very well adapted to help it find food, but its teeth are also very well designed to hang on to its prey so it has no chance of escape as they have very large and strong canine teeth at the front of their mouth, which are followed by rows of smaller canine teeth. But as they aren't the largest fish in the Western Atlantic, they do need to look out for predators, as they're often targeted by sharks, and to help them avoid these predators, they have one more trick up their sleeve, as hogfish are masters of camouflage, and can quickly change their colour to match their environment. And personally, I think it's one of the weirdest fish in the ocean, not only for its teeth, but also for its very strange crocodile-like mouth. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to the Indo-Pacific, as we have the parrotfish, now there are around 90 species of parrotfish that can be found in many different oceans, but the largest concentration of species is in the Indo-Pacific. They are normally found around coral reefs, rocky coasts and seagrass beds, and not only do they play an important role in the ecosystem, but they also play a significant role in bioerosion. As parrotfish got their name because of their beak-like mouths, and they put these beaks to great use. As although some species feed on small organisms, some of the larger species such as the green humphead parrotfish excessively feed on corals. With polyps making up almost half of their diet. And to be able to feed on these foods, they need very strong teeth. And although their beaks may look like they're made out of two or three parts, there are actually numerous numbers of smaller teeth tightly packed together in a mosaic-like structure. And the material that they are made out of is one of the hardest biomaterials in the world. And this material is harder than copper, gold, and silver. And although feeding on coral sounds like quite a bad thing to do, as a lot of coral is bleaching because of global warming, most parrotfish species are actually after the algae that grows on the coral, and this keeps the algae under control and stops it from taking over the reef. But when the parrotfish does eat coral, it is ground down and digested, resulting in only fine sand coming out of the other end. And it's thought that some of the largest species
species of parrotfish can turn one ton of coral into sand each year. And when parrotfish feed on coral, they normally do so in large groups, as they're often found in schools of dozens, which are normally led by one dominant male. And as they aren't a particularly fast species, they have come up with a few ways of escaping from predators. As some species of parrotfish are known to create a mucus cocoon. They normally create these when sleeping, which not only masks its scent from predators, but also gives it a heads up as the parrotfish will wake up when anything enters its cocoon. So this very pretty fish has some of the strongest teeth on the planet. Before our next species, we'll be heading off to southern Australia as we have the Port Jackson shark. Now this is a relatively small species of shark, reaching a maximum size of around 1.65 meters or 5.5 feet long. And despite it being relatively small for a shark, it is the largest in its genus. And the Port Jackson shark has some very strange behaviors for a shark, as just like some other less aggressive species of shark, they are able to force water over their gills while stationary. So unlike some other large species of shark, they don't have to constantly swim to breathe. And throughout most of the day, they can be seen on the seabed or in rocky areas, staying completely still and resting throughout the day. And this is because they are a nocturnal species and do most of their feeding when the sun goes down. And some species such as the great white are very famous for their teeth, as their jaws are often very wide and covered in serrated teeth. But the Port Jackson shark's teeth are very different, as they're almost a squashed version of regular shark jaws. And this is because they're very well adapted for eating specific prey items, as although they are known to feed on some small fish, their diet mainly consists of invertebrates, sea stars and worms. And at the front of its jaws, its teeth are very small and pointy, and these are very effective to grab and hold onto prey, and the teeth near the back of its mouth are very strong and wide, and these are perfect for crushing and grinding the shells of their prey before they are eventually swallowed. And Port Jackson sharks are also known to eat something else which is very strange, as unlike some species of shark, they do not give birth to live young, but instead lay very exquisite eggs. But this shark isn't the best parent, as they're often known to find their eggs too irresistible and they wolf them down. So it's very fitting that this very unique shark has a very unique set of jewels. But for our last species, we'll be heading to the Eastern Pacific Ocean as we have the California sheephead. Now I did feature this fish in a very recent video as it's a very famous inhabitant of the kelp forests. And this large wrasse species is one of the larger fish that can be found in the kelp forests, reaching a maximum size around 91 centimeters or three feet long. And this species plays a very important role in the kelp forest ecosystem as they have very large pointed teeth and a very strong set of jaws and they put these to great use normally hunting in the day for invertebrates mollusks and sea urchins and as these sea urchins feed on the kelp the california sheephead play an important role in the health of the kelp forests and just like the previously featured hogfish and parrotfish this is another species that shows a lot of sexual dimorphism and also goes through a sex change throughout its life cycle and these larger males are often followed by other fish as when they feed on a large sea urchin or crustacean, it triggers a feeding frenzy with many other fish looking to get in on the action. But unfortunately today, this species is vulnerable to extinction, as in recent years it's been overfished. And as it plays such an important role in keeping the numbers of sea urchins down, it's very important that we protect this species so that it can use its very strange teeth and jaws to keep the kelp forests healthy. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any more fish with very strange teeth, then let me know down in the comments below and I might make a part two to this list. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.